Sábado eu falei a pior do Twitter. Ela vai ter minha mãe e ela vai ter minha mãe. Eu estou com a coroa. Eu tenho uma outra mãe que eu estou falando. Eu estou falando que eu estou falando. Eu estou falando que eu estou falando. Eu estou falando que eu estou falando. Kalau tahu saya mau faham, saya tidak mahu faham mulai kau ini. Tama ayat tua, tama milo ayat. Aku kau lagi faham wajib mahu ayat itu. Kita ngan, kita mau tahu tahu faham tu mau faham. Tiada mohon faham. Kena kena kira kau film ni leh ayat. Tapi hebo kita kau taki. Kau pula ngan, kena nafu ia ayat hebo ngan ino. Mau uang kita ha. Ia tinggal tol yang mereka kai. Waktu awak kai dengar leh pelutun, agi mau tol, mau fata tahmai, ia mau mau refrain. Aikau fai fikau, aikau fayat, aikau matu atau fanal, agi nau tol, nau uah heboh nau mamahi. Mau apa pun pula, ekie fakih dia mau di mau tol. Kau uhiya, kau fatungiya, kau kekeh mau ngapok mau ketu mau keting mau tol tata. Ekie tu aku awam mau emak apa, kau mau tol lah emak apa. Tahu kunonga mau hebi api, anak kunonga ana mengai kunonga mau jeleu itu kaya mau. ที่ฟังเราเนี่ยตั้งเสียพิจารณาคิดเต็มๆมันเอาต้นมันเอาอะไรก็แบบเชื่อเสียกันเอาไม่เกินเรามาไม่ได้เขียนฟังฟังอ
ako i John Kills koji ne piti, koji ne sami, koji a e ha ha i ka la ma na ka o pa sa da va. Pa veri koji a i a e i o u sa i da vi ti. Oh, my God. 
What kind of questions do you want to ask? I hope I can answer. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any questions you want to ask about? Don't ask me any questions about grammar, tongue and grammar, because I never I never learned tongue and formally. <laughs> I left school for New Zealand, boarding school, um, Auckland, New Zealand, when I was about 12. So I never got any formal uh, teaching of uh, the tongue and language. I was taught um, written and, and uh, re reading and writing in Tonga through Sunday schools. Sunday school every time I went back to Tonga. Uh, so that's how I learned my Tonga. So I've never really had any formal um, teaching of Tonga as, as you're receiving now. <laughs> children in Tonga, um, all children in high school in Tonga, they have this exam called Tongan exam. It's about the toughest formal exam that uh, Tongan children take before university entrance. Yeah. About 14 years old, what grade would that be? 14 years old, 8th eighth, eighth grade, 8th eighth, eighth grade, you say? Well, every 14 year old high school student at Tonga has to sit this exam called Tongan exam. And it has Tongan language, history, culture, tradition. Um, you have to make a Tongan handicraft, is that right, Maria yes, Sophia? That's right. Yes. You have to choose um, what you want to make uh, a basket or you know, the gaffa, the sinnet cord that you put around your waist. And um, you have to, uh, most students have to pass this exam, right? In order to go on to the next class. So if you want to sit university entrance uh, to go into university, you've got to pass this Tongan exam. And um, if you're very bright at English and maths, um, it doesn't mean to say that you're going to get, <laughs> you're going to pass this Tongan exam. Because they teach you how to compose, how to dance, how to speak the three languages. Have you have you started um, learning the three languages? Three Swana. different. Okay. Yes. yes oh, you have to know that because in Tonga, um, there's a different language for the king and God, biblical language. Then there's a language for the royal family and members of the clergy. 
like the Fifing Gaos and the nuns and sisters. And then there's the common Tongan, and which is used every day. And um, it's very disrespectful in Tonga if you speak to um, somebody of a certain class with the wrong language, wrong Tonga. It's a bit difficult. So the government decided to have to include this in the Tongan exam that all 14 year olds have to sit because it's much um, easier that way. Because not everybody gets taught at home. Um, in Tonga now, there's um, a lot more responsibility on the teachers in Tonga. And, um, and I find personally that a lot of um, history and tradition that was supposed to have been taught at home by the parents because um, the mother doesn't have time and because some homes don't have grandmothers or elderly people staying there or they don't know enough, then the, the curriculum, uh, which is what they teach at school, includes the traditions and oral history and so forth. So it's very useful, this Tongan exam. My two girls, my two older daughters, um, they sat this at Tonga High School, um, which is the state school in Tonga the Tongan exam and thank goodness they both passed. But they love it. <laughs> they love that, that particular um, uh, lesson. They love their Tongan. But they went to school in Tonga for uh, a year before they sat this, this exam. You need to go to Tonga and um, go there for at least a year or two before you, you're able to sit, right? Because if you sit this exam straight away, I don't think you'll pass, anybody will pass. <laughs> if I went to sit this exam, I don't know whether I'll scrape through or not. Because it's, um, it's a very formal part of the process. But I can see that you're all very eager to learn Tom, and I think that's very good. I'm very, very proud of you. When um, Apollo, when Dee told me, how the uh, Maria Sophia has started this Tongan class, Tongan language class, I was very, very proud of all of you and, <laughs> and the teachers because it, it's not a very easy language to learn. You know, you're learning Tongan as a, as a second language because English is supposed to be your mother tongue. It's your first language. So you're really learning Tonga as, Tongan as a foreigner. <laughs> but there's no shame in that. There's no shame in that. I think it's, it's wonderful that you're taking the time and energy to learn your own language. Because when you go back to Tonga, then you can communicate with Tongans in Tonga. You know? And um, this problem is not, uh, doesn't only belong to Tongans. The, the, I'm sure the Spanish-speaking children they speak English, and some of them have forgotten Spanish. The Chinese, I know for sure, most Chinese American uh, born here um, don't speak Chinese anymore. It, it's not just Tongans who don't know how to speak their own language at your level. So you're not the only ones. I think there are a lot of all the other minority races in the United States, I'm sure, have this language problem. So you're not alone. <laughs> Is there anything else, anything that you wanted to ask me? Can you say that for apa apa? Right. For apa apa means, uh, generally speaking, means the respect. And um, in the Tongan culture, um, you cannot respect someone else if you don't respect yourself. You all know that, do you? Yeah. Do you? Do you all know what I mean? You have to have self-respect in order to respect other people. And that is, um, that is the main um, component of Tongan respect. Um, nowadays in Tonga, because of the um, population explosion in Tonga, uh, unfortunately, we've had to live in, um, in sort of Western-style houses. You know, we can afford only one house with one bathroom. If we're lucky, we can have two bathrooms. But in the old days in Tonga, the boys had a separate house and the girls had a separate house. And that was part of Whakaapa Apa. 
so that you don't use the same bathrooms and you don't see each other's bedrooms in Tonga. Um, nowadays, also when we come over to the United States, that's very difficult to have because housing is expensive in the United States to buy a house or even to rent a house or an apartment. But um, <coughs> one important thing about, about um, Whakaapa Apa in Tongan is, is that you must respect yourself and you respect your parents, you respect your brothers um, and your your grandmothers or your great-grandmothers and grandfathers and so forth. You have to respect everybody in the family. In the old days in Tonga when I grew up, if I was in the same room as my brother, brothers or my, um, my male cousins or my male, any male relative, um, your conversation would be very limited to certain topics which excluded um, um, sex. No <laughs> sex. You just don't talk about sex or boyfriends or even kissing or even going out mm -hmm. in the same room uh, with your male relatives. Um, of course you can discuss that amongst yourself yourselves as girls, you know, but when you have members of the opposite sex, it's very disrespectful to talk about that. So your parents actually were brought up that way. Um, what is something else? Uh, I want to talk to you about something that is relevant to your life, you know, because Fra Papa is such a wide and um, encompassing thing. I mean, it's going to take me hours, and I'm sure you don't want to sit there for hours and hear me talk about it. But that's basically it, you know. There are certain taboo subjects you're not supposed to mention in front of them, like um, sex, nudity, um, what else is there? Very taboo subjects still in Tonga, you know, because schools in Tonga don't have sex education. I'm still right, aren't I? <laughs> yes. Don't forget, I've lived out of Tonga for more than 10 years. Um, yes, and that's basically what you shouldn't be doing. And that's why you get dirty looks from your parents <laughs> if you sort of discuss things in a loud voice. You know. um, also, oh, there's one important thing. Um, well, that actually has to do with etiquette is that um, you shouldn't really touch anybody on the head. Um, the head is a very sacred part of, the, uh, of your anatomy in Tonga, and you should never ever touch <coughs> anybody on the head. Um, you, in, in my days, when I was growing up, you, you hardly really saw children touching each other on the head. You, know? you don't do that, because only your father's sister touches your head. You all know what fahu means? Well, fahu means basically is your father's sisters. Your father's sisters can do anything to you, basically. They name you. They date, and if your father's sister has a daughter the same age as you and you have a nice dress and she likes it, she has it. <laughs> and what else, what else is there? Oh yes, you know all these things that we spend thousands on like 21st birthday parties and weddings and funerals and all that? Well, the person that has the best, the top tier of the cake of the wedding is the fahu. That is the highest ranking member in your family. That will be your father's sister and her children and her children and her children and so on. It goes on and on. There is no end to fahu. <laughs> so everybody has a fahu. Everybody has a fahu. Um, there is one thing I'm going to tell you about this that I've discovered in the United States which I don't think is such a good idea. Now, we can take this fahu business too much, you know, and we go to great expense and we grow to, we, we, we show off a, a bit too much and it's unnecessary, you know. You're basically only meant to have one fahu. Say if your father has ten sisters, right? You don't have to provide ten different tears, cakes, colors, all that. Just the eldest sister will do, okay? Or the eldest sister's child will do. We don't have to provide 
ten of everything if your if your fathers have ten sisters. I know that when we come to the States, you know, everything is new to us and we want to do the best we can. Very often when you do the best you can, you do too much and then you get into debt. Your parents get into debt because of this and, and that's not good and when you see your parents suffer and get into debt, then you don't respect our customs anymore and that's wrong. We should only do what we can. If we have a big wedding, it's okay if we only have 200 people. We don't have to have 500 people at every family wedding we have, do we? So you go tell your parents that I told you. <laughs> and if they want to know more about our culture, uh, they can come and ask me. Everybody knows where I live in Hillsborough. I see a lot of Tongan people coming in. I just what I thought would be the best thing to do. You know, give them some advice. Um, but I find it easier to talk to your generation than to talk to your parents' generation because your parents' generation will never, will never tell me um, their problems. They'll only tell me what they think I want to hear. Okay. So every time you see me, if you want to, to know something about Tongan culture, maybe you can write it down and give it to Maria Sophia. She and I have the same hairdresser. And she can always <laughs> give that to me. You know, I, I would really like that. If you have questions about Tongan culture that you'd like to know, I, I, I would like you to just write them down. You don't have to put your name down. Just write them down, give them to Maria Sophie, and I'll try and write down the answer, and she can bring them back to you. And please limit it to two questions per person. <laughs> Is that all? Is that is there any other questions you'd like to ask? Um, yeah. Now we're getting <laughs> Um I would just like to know what were the advantages and disadvantages to growing up in the royal family. Oh. <laughs> How much time have you got? <laughs> um, right. Advantage, of course, is the... Um, what is the advantage of growing up in the royal family? Well, now I have an inkling of what it's like not to be royal because uh, my children are not princesses and so I try to give them as much normality in life as possible. Um, I've always had a very secluded upbringing. I'm, I'm the only girl. I have three younger brothers, uh, two younger and one older brothers. But um, I guess the, the advantage about being um, in the royal family is that you grow up in a very um, uh, safe and secluded um, atmosphere and it's a very happy um, and we don't see our parents quarreling <laughs> um, too much or no pressure on them as much. Of course they have pressure but different kinds of pressure. They feel pressure not only for us but for the whole extended family and the whole country most of the time. But um, I think it's the choice of what I want to do. I, I do things that I, I like to do nowadays. <laughs> Before I, I was pressurized by my parents, you know, go to school, do well at school, and uh, achieve, achieve, success, success. Everybody's watching you, you make a good example, you're the only girl, and I'm the eldest of all my girl co uh, cousins. My, my female cousins on my mother's side are all younger than I am. So I always had that pressure on my head, whatever you do wrong, everybody else is going to follow you. So you do everything right, you have to be 100% because everybody's watching you. So I thank the Lord that I didn't grow up neurotic or anything like that because I always had this from my aunts. Your mother's sisters, there is no word for auntie in Tongan. The only word for auntie in Tongan is mehikitanga. Mehikitanga is your father's sister. There we go back to the fire. Your mother's sisters are all called fa'e, mother. The word for, for mother is referred to for your mother and her sisters. <coughs> Even your mother's brothers are fa'e. They are male fa'es. Eh? <coughs> fa'e tangata. That is only referred to. 
So they, they're supposed to bring you up, actually. You're supposed, when you have a problem or in trouble, you're supposed to go to your mother's family. You know, your father's family will basically <coughs> disown you when you <laughs> have a problem. No, 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 I'm just joking. <laughs> you know, I really can't, I really can't, um, yes, there is a disadvantage, is because you can never really, I never really got close to a Tongan really knew, I'd never had Tongan friends until I grew up. I, I never had, I was never close to anybody outside my family as a child. I, I didn't have private tutors. I went to, to a primary school, state primary school, because my parents are very modern. They wanted me to have a normal, balanced life, so I went there. Um, then I went to private boarding school uh, when I was 12 in New Zealand, all-girls school. I thought I was going to die for the first six months because I couldn't stand the food they had. But it's very nourishing food. Now I find out it's very nourishing food. Actually, my, my two older daughters at, were at that same school. My, my eldest daughter is now at Auckland University, and my second one is still there, her last year. But um, what else out there? Oh yes, I can't just get up and say, Mom, Dad, I want to go and see the movies, so off I go with my friends to the movies. Can't do that. Um, have to go with about 15 people to go and see the movies. Of course, things got really good after I got married. After I got married, um, I could just ask my husband to take me to the movies. You know. But before I was married, absolutely no, no. Um, couldn't go out dancing. Um, Basically, a good, genuine tongue and upbringing, no dating till you're 21. And when you're 21, and um, when you're 21, I was so busy with my teaching job back in Tonga, establishing the um, kindergarten system in Tonga. I just, well, I think men were the last thing on my mind then. I was so busy. You know, I, I used to think that growing up as a a royal um, female in Tonga was a conspiracy against my spare time. I didn't have spare time. <laughs> I can't remember when I had the, any spare time at that age. But I think as a royal person, there's more advantages than disadvantages. Um, basically, the best thing that's happened to me is the travel that I've had. It's really broadened my mind. When I um, got married 24, my husband and I, um, went to England, and um, my husband studied in Oxford for a year. That's where I had my, my eldest daughter, our eldest daughter. Then we came back to Tonga for a year, they went back for a couple more years, was it three more years, then back for three years. I've been backwards and forwards, in and out of England for 10 years, and then I've lived here for, for two years, and I have two more years left, and it's really being an been an, an eye opener because you can I can I can look at my own country and culture objectively. You know, I, I, I have um, a much better appreciation of what it is to be a Tongan and Tonga as a whole than if I had just living in Tonga. You, you take a lot of things for granted when you live, you know, in your country all the time. It's not until you you leave that you appreciate your country most, I think. But have I gone over my time, Mother Sophia? I'm going to talk to your parents downstairs? Oh, oh, I've enjoyed talking to you children, and I'm, I know I shouldn't say children. Children too in the front row, young men and women at the back. I, what I'd really like to do in the future, perhaps in a few months' time, is just sort of walk into a normal, you know, um, after-school program. That's what I want to do. I, I just want to walk in, no ceremonies, n nothing like that, nothing special. I just want to come in and walk in to see what you actually do, what you need help in, and you know how you're helped, and what kind of lessons that you find difficult at school. This sort of, this is my dream. This is what I want to do. But for now, we will do what your parents want us to do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
jako važnost, ja osim odpina to sam.
to establish and maintain communication with the school. Most importantly, it provides opportunity, opportunities for parents and students. Each school site chapter is led by African American, Hispanic, or Pacific Island parents. Here at Sequoia, the school, Sequoia High School, the target success parent group is mainly Tonga and led by Rachel. Dee also works with the target success parent coordinator in training Pacific Island parents to host the home study centers. This group of parents began meeting last year in April and became so committed they continue to meet during the summer. These are some examples of what the Sequoia parents and students are doing to make a difference in education. Parents meet monthly to learn about school policy. Parents have learned to discuss their concerns with the principal, Earl Walker. Parents attend board meetings and site council meetings to seek funds to support programs. Parents have worked with St. Peter's Church and the school to establish a home study center, which is open three days a week and serves over 20 students. Parents have taken the, taken the stipend, stipends and organized other fundraising events to establish a Sequoia Quality Scholarship Fund. Students participate in the Sequoia Polynesian Society. Students play an active role in organizing fundraising events. Parents work with students to develop leadership and to help them realize the value of education. Parents work to teach the Tongan culture and language in the home study center in hopes that it will strengthen the academic achievement of their children. This class is taught by Sister Malia Sophia and is funded by, the, by Sequoia High School. Parents are advocating for school materials to enhance their students' achievement. Parents have witnessed an increase in parent participation and positive life changes in their students. One of the goals for this year's Sequoia Parent Group is to raise enough funds to offer what a $1,000 scholarship to each graduating senior. Your Highness, the parents wanted me to tell you that this has not been an easy journey, but they have learned to cooperate and work together for the greater good of the students. Parents hope that this will be a model that will be continued by their children. It has also been a valuable experience working with other parents from different ethnic groups. For me as a district leader, it has been a pleasure and a valuable experience to work with Pacific Islander parents and students. I am also enrolled in the tongue, tongue and language class. Thank you.
which we have lost uh, some of our very old, old, old Tom and Dance called Metu Baki. And it's all done by men and it's extremely slow. Hardly anybody understands what that language is. We know, you know, we know the songs, but we don't know the meaning of it, really. And, and that was part of the naughty things at the mission. But however, the Thomans, you know, in their great, uh, great thinking, they put on their thinking caps and they invented my great great grandfather. And also, we have common, and some of these uh, Thomans here, also their ancestors, invented what we call laka laka. Laka laka means that you walk to music or walk to song. Now, when the missionaries asked us, oh, but you're dancing, and we said, oh, no, we're just singing and walking this way, walking there. So because they had stopped us. They had stopped us from doing our traditional dances. And um, so Thomas have a very inventive uh, streak in their nature. Whenever they, there's a saying about that says, whenever God closes the door, he opens the window. Well, I think that's true in the Tongan culture. Whenever that door was closed, Tongans found the open window, and so we invented the Laka Laka. So the history of Tongan dance goes way back to the history of Tonga itself. But um, I just wanted to say something to all of you that I would be very happy and more proud of you if you kept on doing what you're doing right now. And I wish that every Thomas in Redwood City would support this program or have their own similar program because I think it's the most effective way of teaching our children our own culture. And also what I'd really, really, really like to see happen is Thomas um, sharing their culture with other ethnic minorities that live here. I'm sure that Dorothy has a program up this series. And this year. And Thor. And Dean. They all have something up this series. That is what I'd really like to see. But first of all, we want to teach our children and we want you girls and boys to really know what it's like to be a Thomas. And then after that, the next step is sharing our culture and interacting or networking with other um, ethnic minorities. Maybe your parents couldn't do that, but there's no excuse for your generation because you're born and brought up in America. So I'd just like to say thank you very much, and I'll give you another three months to improve your tongue. And then I'll come back. <laughs> so I'll see you all in three months. I don't think I'll let you know. I'll just give Dorothy a call here and to the group and just walk straight into the classroom one afternoon and give you a nice visit. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a piece of fire.
behalf of the people of St. Peter's Church, I would like to say that we are deeply honored to have the Princess with us this day. We are also more than delighted, I would even say thrilled, to have this program in our church. I feel that it's not only a splendid program with wonderful results, but to have the Tongan people here on a daily, daily basis is a real blessing to us because I have found them to be extraordinarily rich in spirit. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of the Tongan people and in particular the gift of the princess with us this day. We thank you for this program and we ask you to continue to bless our society. Wow. 